Hi everyone, machine translation and artificial intelligence are breaking down language barriers like never before. But as we begin to use these technologies more and more, what does this mean for our linguistic diversity? Will it lead to a bland, homogenous future where one culture and language inevitably dominate? Or will these capabilities enable greater understanding and cultural exchange? Keep listening to find out more. This video has three sections. How language shapes you, why AI understands most languages, and is language a winner-take-all enterprise? First section. How language shapes you. English is a good language for technical and concrete descriptions. Japanese is a good language for achieving consensus in. Greek is a good language for expressing abstract concepts. These might be cliches, but there is some truth to the matter. The Sapir-Whorf hypothesis, I hope I said that right, says that the structure of a language influences its speaker's worldview and cognitive abilities. I want to draw a parallel to a fantastic short sci-fi novel called Babel 17 by Samuel R. Delaney. In this book, there's a mysterious new language going around that lets you think extremely quickly. Once you start learning the language and then you start thinking in the language, you're effectively thinking 100 times faster than anyone else around you. This seems like a superpower and a lot of people want to learn this language as a result, but the language has some built-in mental traps in it. It's very hard to think about certain things like feelings and affection and respect for other people while thinking in this language, so you tend to make tactical errors. And if you keep thinking in Babel 17, for too long, your mind will eventually burn out and you can't escape from it. You can't get back to your original mode of cognition. It's an extremely cool concept and I highly recommend you check it out if you're interested in science fiction. Ironically, when it comes to AI models, we don't really understand how they're thinking, what their internal representations are, what fundamental language of abstract understanding and motivation might they be using. It's probably quite different from our own, especially because AI models are able to understand a large number of languages. In humans, bilingualism or multilingualism in other words, being essentially fluent in two or more languages, is pretty common, especially in parts of the world like Europe, and it allows increased mental flexibility. Apparently, when you're listening to sounds, the language processing parts of your brain get automatically engaged, which makes sense because there's no conscious thought to that process. But when you speak multiple languages, you actually have to temporarily suppress your knowledge of the other languages in order to focus on the one that's actually being spoken. Psychologists call this inhibition, and it's an executive brain function that's very useful for focusing on one task when there's a lot of noise or other distractions. People that are bilingual are better and faster at switching between different types of thinking, and hence they're better at thinking outside the box and might be more creative as well. Because your brain has to effectively disable parts of itself in order to deal with the normal world around you. Curiously, it's this form of attention that's also used in large language models to focus in on aspects of a problem. Anyway, it's pretty clear that the language you speak or the languages that you speak really do impact your ability to think and reason. The I mentioned the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis, and strong version of that is not generally accepted. The strong version says that you can only think whatever you can think in the languages that you know, but the weak version is generally accepted by psychologists, which says that your cognition is influenced to some degree by the languages that you know. Part two, why AI understands most languages. When Google was developing the first models for Google Translate, the models were very specific from language A to language B, for example, English to Spanish. They couldn't be used for any other purpose. This meant that a lot of different models had to be created for every different combination of languages that users might want to translate between. And so it was fairly limited and rather clunky to introduce new languages to the system. At one point, Google decided to use the new technology of deep learning to try to train a deep learning language translation model. And they fed it as much language as they could get their hands on, text from all over the internet and lots of internal sources as well, I'm sure. And what they found, to their surprise, was that this deep learning language model worked really well from translating from A to B. But not only that, the same language model could be used to translate between any pair of languages. In other words, this language translation model was somehow decoding every language into some internal abstract representation of meaning. And from there, it could translate out to any other language, kind of like how a compiler in computer science can come from multiple source languages and target multiple different types of computers. As you might have guessed, large language models arose out of this technology that was originally designed to just do language translation from one language to another. So AI understands most languages simply because it was given training data from most languages. Effectively, models like large language models have spent many, many hours studying each language. But again, the models are also developing a deeper understanding of meaning rather than trying to simply encode things in a syntactic version but again, the models are somehow deriving a very abstract representation of meaning rather than being tied to a specific language. For example, one early large language model was trained on question answering from English 
to English. In other words, it was fed lots of English questions and expected to produce English answers. As this model was scaled up and up, it got better and better at answering these questions in English, but it also developed a very curious property along the way. It suddenly became able to answer questions in Polish. I have no idea how that ability could arise because Polish and English are not very similar, but apparently it developed this emergent ability. There must have been some Polish data in its training input, but again, it wasn't trained specifically on Polish questions to Polish answers, only on the English ones. These days, machine learning, when applied to different disciplines, is basically just using these same language-based models, which is one part of the trend that's accelerating AI research, because all these different fields are able to contribute to language models and thus help each other out. So in short, AI understands most languages because it was given training data from most languages that exist, and also because it's starting to develop emergent properties that allow it to reason from one language into another. Part three, is language a winner-takes-all enterprise? In the software world and the technology world, English is very dominant. In fact, from the early days, English was very dominant on the internet as a whole. These days, a lot more languages are starting to appear, but English has an enormous head start. Thanks to the ascendancy of the British Empire and then the United States, which were two consecutive global powers that happened to use the same language, English became really entrenched and became the language of business. That doesn't mean that everybody spoke only English. It just means that everybody who wanted to engage in global trade was probably going to learn English. So if we extend that trend into the future, is it possible that people will have a strong preference for one language, whether it's English or Chinese or something else, when it comes to AI modeling and culture and technology in general? Software is definitely a winner takes all category. If there's one program that's better than all the other programs in a category, it will take all of the market share. There's really very little space for second best options unless they differ along different axes. I think it's quite likely that an electronically connected world is really going to experience the same effects where one language becomes very dominant and stays that way. Of course, AI will smooth over any other languages that happen to exist. For example, even now you can use Chrome's auto translate to look at a web page in your own language. It's great for booking foreign trips. And I imagine it allows someone to utilize the many English language resources on the internet, even if they don't really speak English very well. My hope is that people will continue to learn their own languages. It seems like there are a lot of cognitive benefits to being able to speak multiple languages. And it's a really important aspect of our cultural diversity as a species. But this Chrome translation effect is only going to get stronger. I wouldn't be surprised if in the future you can understand a foreign language at basically the same rate as your native language because there's some auto translation going on perhaps from a device or from a brain computer interface or something like that. But relying on machine translation all the time is a bit like using the spell checker all the time and not knowing how to spell. Better to put some of that knowledge into your own brain where it's fast, easily accessible, and could spark additional ideas that you might not otherwise have had. So I hope people will continue to learn a huge set of languages in order to preserve our cultural and historic diversity. I grew up only speaking English, but I've had an interest in languages for a long time, and I've studied a few, including Latin, French, and Japanese. So I guess you could say I'm doing my part to preserve our linguistic heritage, and I hope you can too. In conclusion, the languages that you speak affect not only whom you can communicate with, but also what you can think and how you can think. Speaking multiple languages actually affects cognition in a positive way and trains your brain to be very good at inhibition, in other words, turning off parts of your brain when they're not necessary for a given context. And that leads to a lot of follow-on cognitive benefits as well. It seems likely that as technology develops, we'll probably approach a situation where one language gets used the vast majority of the time. But hopefully we can preserve a lot of these other spoken languages as well. If you liked this video, check out this previous one I made on brain-computer interfaces because it talks about how we can already read language in the form of full sentences right out of people's heads. It's pretty cool. Well, that's all I have for today. Thank you very much for watching. Arigatou gozaimasu. Mata ne. Bye.